What's up, everybody? You know, it's me, the undeniable, the piranha that swims with sharks, the little demon that you all love. It is the technician that V on. And tonight, I'm drinking at Moe's. Let's get it. All right, everybody. want to thank Reaper Apparel for having drinking at Moe's be a brand ambassador. They encourage everybody to break out of that comfort zone, live their best self, which, hey, that's what got me starting the podcast. But they got great clothing, great apparel, t-shirts, hoodies, beanies, hats, all that good stuff. Be sure, link will be in the description, and use the code Drinking at Moe's to get 10% off your order. Let's fucking go. All right, everybody. Welcome to Drinking at Moe's. Big Mo here. As always, YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, hit the notifications. It helps with the pain in the ass algorithm they got over there. We're most places you can find your podcast, <laughs> iHeartRadio, Amazon, all that. Today, I have with me, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing the name wrong. I probably should have asked this before, but the technician and De dead via. Okay, I'm going to edit this part out. I'm going <laughs> to. So, Devion. Devion, okay. I'll edit that part out and we'll get oh, rewind. Dude. Big Mo here, drinking at Mo's. We're you know, YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, all that good shit because it helps with the pain in the ass algorithm. We're pretty much everywhere you can find your podcast. Today, I have with me the technician, Devion. How you doing? What's up, my man? How's it going, bro? It's going pretty good. I've got some pretty good stuff coming up next month. Some kind of bucket list items for me because <laughs> me being people don't realize this. My me, yeah, I'm based right now out of Omaha, Nebraska, but I didn't get my start watching independent wrestling in Omaha. I got I was in the Navy down in San Diego, California. And that's where I got my start watching it. And I got a guy, unless he has to back out for whatever reason it might be, I got a guy that's uh, pretty much a legend over there that I have been wanting to get on for a while and just got it confirmed over the weekend. So I'm, I'm pretty pumped. Got an interview with the, uh, member of the NOI family, so that's freaking huge. So, I can't complain. Sounds pretty impressive, my guy. No, I, like I said, when I, I'm pumped, and when I got started doing this, I literally started interviewing my friends that were wrestlers in the area, and ended up somebody that had faced off against the Briscoes and the Hardys ended up liking a tweet of mine on somebody. So I'm like, this might be a long shot, but let's see if it sticks. And then here I am, you know, here I am. Let's get it. Yeah, definitely. First thing I'd like to start off with my guests, especially the first time guests is what got you started as a fan. And then what got you started deciding to make the leap into the business? Because Everybody makes that decision at different points. Some people earlier in their lives than others. I mean, hell, what was it? DDP got started when he was like damn near 40. Well, with me, it's a little different than DDP. I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not 40 yet. So um, when I was about five, my grandpa introduced me to old WCW tapes and uh, 
my family, we we're built on one thing and that's God puts you here on earth for a reason. And once you find that reason, it's up to you to make that reason happen. So ever since five, I, I couldn't be a professional wrestler, but I hit the mat, became an amateur wrestler all through school and just never stopped. Just, just not, it's something I just don't plan on stopping doing ever. And that that is awesome because I think uh, kind of going off of what you said there, I forget who said it, but it's like there's – two points in life when you're born and then when you find out why and when you find out that why and you get the chance to go all out for it, it it's something special yeah man you got two options you can either suffer the pain of regret or suffer mm-hmm. the pain of discipline and yeah chose- no no totally because hell that reminds me of another another quote it's like you'd rather at the end of your life be like man i did that then damn it i should have done that absolutely and one thing i was curious about when doing my homework is the name that the technician it brings about a certain context that i'm curious about when it comes to you, how did the, the origins of the, the technician come about? Well, the origins of the technician came about when I was on the mat. When it just became very mm-hmm. clear to me that not very many people can keep up with me. Okay. So uh, I'm pretty good at um, moving bones around, <laughs> so to speak. So, I mean, it just came naturally to me. The Wrestling itself came naturally to me. Other things I may have struggled at, part of that's being new to the business. But when it, always, when it comes down to getting on a mat, locking up with me, and wrestling with me, there's not very many people that can keep up. No, and, you know, when you get the start in amateur wrestling, I mean, there's loads of people out there that have kind of proven it. Yeah, you have a little bit of an advantage once you jump in to those ropes. I mean, hell, just look at Brock Lesnar, uh, Shelton Benjamin, Chad Gable right now. Like people on like high levels of the business got their start amateur wrestling. And I mean, hell, Kurt Angle, too. Another (laughs) guy out there that is like, these guys got their start amateur wrestling achieved what they did there and a lot of greatness and now they're Kurt Angle Hall of Famer Brock Lesnar one of the most decorated pro wrestlers combat sports athletes there is absolutely yeah and then going into you know Things down in Texas and Oklahoma, there's like independent wrestling right now is in a boom all over the country. There's, I mean, you got Fight TV, IWTV, Pro Wrestling TV, all sorts of options out there. And Texas, in and of itself, has countless options i mean mission pro with you know thunder rosa running Mm -hmm. that down there reality of wrestling booker t's promotion and then what's it like for some of the promotion what are some of the promotions for those that will end up watching that you are involved in that you are having some stuff that you're excited about because like i said there's stuff all over well, there is a ton of promotions I work for. Um, I'm looking to go all over the country, so, you know, bug me today. But um, I am currently the Empire Pro Wrestling uh, All-American Champion. Ugh. I currently have this bad boy for the Empire Pro. So Empire That's Pro awesome. is a good one that I like to watch. Uh, that I recommend people watch. I've, also I've fought the, a couple matches. Also the NCWO 
tag team champion with, you know, my dog, Kane Carter, you know, part of KOA. Hey. NCW, was, also based out of Oklahoma. Okay. I There's was plenty actually, out there, man. There's, uh, for Texas, man, we got HOT, which is a bomb promotion oh. in, uh, yeah, yeah. in uh, Texas. King of Sports is also a very great promotion in Texas. Um, you also have, you know, DFW, their training facility as well. Some of the best workers in the country came from there. Um, like I said, I get, you got WAW, Metroplex Wrestling. You know, yeah. You've had Athena from all the people from Athena to Exodus Prime on there. I mean, there's so many yeah. great names that have been on there. Um, sorry if I miss a few. Um, not the best at memory. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Sometimes I get that way myself. And you brought up King Carter. I was actually – I had him scheduled. We're having to reschedule because the time that we had scheduled, it ended up he what wasn't going to be able to make it. All the credit to him for giving me as Is much, you know, yeah, and you know him giving me as much notice as he did. Whoops, my camera just went a little. But yeah, he he gave me as much notice as he did, which I appreciate because. Let, let's say I've had people that I haven't heard weren't going to be able to do it until an hour or so later if I got told at all. Kane has definitely been my most – he's my, he's my competition, but he's also my brother. Like, um, yeah. if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have gotten – like I said in the beginning, wrestling in general is the easiest part for me. Everything else I had to – pick up and learn and um you know Kane really uh he really saved me he really took me under his wing even though he didn't have to and he uh made sure that I uh got on the right path and he's kept me on the right path so all shout out to him no de definitely and all the all due respect to him all much love and respect there and you know what that's the wonderful thing about wrestling kind of bringing people together I know when I got back from the Navy, there was some stuff that I, I struggled with getting back into not having so much of the military mindset, you know, living that way all the time to getting back into the civilian world. I always tell people that, you know, having, having that support system, having those people behind you will definitely help because... I lucked out that when I was down in San Diego, I met a guy that at the time ran a promotion that was based across the river from me now. And then I ended up meeting a bunch of my friends that have ended up, you know, taking me under their wing in a lot of aspects. I've been invited to their weddings birthday parties i hell one of them even introduced me to my wife and so it's it's good you know you have somebody like kane carter that you know helped you out in those aspects because like a lot of people you know you go through stuff that you know sometimes having that person at your side can definitely be that thing that definitely makes it a little easier to, for, to deal with some stuff. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, one, I was thinking about this when I was, you know, looking through social media and doing some homework for the episode that, you know, you bring up going back to King Carter there. That uh, AEW recently had a show down in Texas, and yep. I believe it was one of those belts that you ended up showing that those that watch the YouTube version of this will get to see. One of that one right there, if you pay it close enough attention, was actually on AEW television. If you go look it up, Kane has wrestled on AEW. That man is a monster, and he's a, like I said, Kane is, Kane's the future of this business. And uh, 
right now my only competition is keeping up with that man. And as uh, long as I can do that, I know my future is bright and none because I already know he's headed to the top. And one day it will either be us battling for bigger tag titles or we'll be battling each other. Either way, that's going to be my brother till I die. That That's good having somebody like that. I know another guy you brought up that he he's had some history there with AEW. You know, not so many people when it comes to independent wrestling get used in an in-ring aspect as frequently. But Exodus Prime, he's he's been on their handful of times if i remember right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i've tagged with him a couple times uh battled him a couple times he's he's one of the toughest one he's he's hot and he's one of the toughest to ever come out of dfw so i'll shout out to him oh d- definitely and there was a point another one of those you know ended up gonna have to reschedule we just haven't nailed it down yet but you know We'll hopefully down the road here soon make that happen. I know uh, there's been some people that have come out of Texas. I have a little bit of a name game here mm-hmm. where a bunch of these guys, some of them are current, some of them legends that have come out of Texas and I want you, you hear the name and give me the first thought that pops in your head about them. Okay. We'll see what I can do. Oof, I'm not good with names. <laughs> it's all good. I've had some people, you know, very short answers. Some people a little bit longer of an answer, but it's all good. First one, a guy that I've actually had the pleasure of getting to meet once. I actually have a signed wrestling figure of his down in my basement. The limitless one, Keith Lee. Um, upgraded version of Malik Mayfield. Okay. Okay. And I, I like the one thing that I like about him that I actually – kind of inadvertently had a little bit of a conversation with the uh, rich swan about when I met him at a show that Keith Lee came up and it's like how in before he left WWE, there was talk about, you know, people wanting him to like really cut down the like almost similar in a way to what, uh, well, I hate calling him Gunther, but that's what he's known as. You know, how Gunther is kind of slimmed down. Hmm. They kind of wanted that out of him. But well, Keith- when, I, when I say upgraded version of Malik Mayfield, I mean it as in Keith Lee is the – he's the revolutionary big man in my eyes. Oh. He made – he made being a big man cool again, and it brought in guys like Malik Mayfield and – other people of, of that nature who can still do the athletic stuff and still be able to show that off. And I don't, I think it's amazing. I think what Keith Lee does, he's a leader of a whole new generation of wrestlers and he doesn't need to change anything about himself. Oh, and you know what? That's kind of what I was leading into. You know, he is definitely one of those guys that, you know, he's one of the most athletic big men, like, Really, in pro wrestling history, he doesn't really need to slim down unless that's what he chooses to do. He -hmm. can do everything that the slim down guys do, but remain the way he is and not compromise himself. And that's something to be commended for. Absolutely. And there's, I, I tweeted this the other day that it's like there, there's not really a greater feeling than taking a bet on yourself and it paying off. And that's definitely seems to be how things have worked out with, with Keith Lee. I mean, he's gone from Ring of Honor to WWE and, you know, 
Now, WWE might have wanted him to do certain things that he just didn't believe he had to do to be at that level. Went on to AEW, and now he's a former tag champ and doing big things down there. Next up, guy that uh, definitely a legend in Texas. I've been through the town that he is known and built out of, that being Amarillo, Terry Funk. Craziest wrestler to ever live. You know what? That it would be hard to argue against that. I mean, you look at the wars that he's had with you know, Cactus Jack and all those crazy, crazy wrestlers ever live. I've actually got to meet. I've actually got to meet him, which was that was some. But yeah, no, the wars those two guys had, and you know, hell. The wars he had with ECW with Sabu and that barbed wire match, like that was some insane stuff. Absolutely. Next up, another guy that I have actually had the pleasure of getting to meet. Another guy I actually have a signed wrestling figure for. The Murder Hawk, Lance Archer. Lance Archer. King of the Texas Death Match. Yep. I can't argue with that one bit. <laughs> I mean, nice dude getting to talk to him, but goddamn, when when you see him in that mode when that camera is on, he is one intimidating motherfucker. When I hear Texas Death Match, I think of Lance. So yeah, definitely. I just no. associate those two very much so well together. He's oh. definitely a goat out of Texas for sure. Oh, yeah. And I mean, wasn't it two of the last – two of the last uh, IWGP United States Championship matches, I remember two of them that he had were specifically Texas death matches, if, I'm, if I remember right. Yep. Next up, a guy that I am, I don't get starstruck too easily, but if I ever got to meet this guy, I would probably not be able to get a word out. <laughs> Stone Cold Steve Austin. Mount Rushmore of greatest characters of all time. I would have to agree when he finally landed on that Stone Cold character and they. That uh, Austin, that first Austin three sixteen promo during the that King of the Ring, I'm spacing off on the year that it happened, but man, when that first one happened and it just caught on the way it did, mm-hmm. something special that don't happen very often anymore. Um, who would who would you say if? You could uh, choose a guy that you haven't met. Who would who would be somebody on a list of like somebody that you would like to let's say sit under the learning tree of and get to pick their brain for a little bit? Shawn Michaels or AJ Styles. Two very good <laughs> options. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty fast with that one. <laughs> no, yeah. no. That, hey, nothing wrong with that. I I almost had the opportunity to meet Shawn Michaels once, but it was at a convention here in Omaha, but then weather caused it to, his flight to not be able to happen. But I did get to meet AJ Styles once. It was AJ. right. Oh, man. He was cool, dude. He... It was right in between when he left Impact and in between there and when he went to New Japan for that that run that he had there before WWE. He did some independent shows and did one here 
in Omaha that I got to meet him there. It was something, something cool for sure. Yeah, if you uh, really pay attention to how I wrestle you, it's very easy to tell who my heroes are. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you know what? That that's that, that's pretty cool because you know people. There's there's some people out there that take that and make you know kind of some people do a little bit more of the like they're almost a carbon copy of somebody but like you there there's nothing wrong with how like how you do it where like you'll take stuff from AJ from Shawn Michaels from anybody else and like mold it into your own thing so it's not like you're just a carbon copy of somebody else. Yeah. I, uh, so I, I, I don't like to copy their exact moves. Like I don't use super kicks. I don't use the phenomenal forearm or any of that. Um, yeah, I mean, I could, but I mean, <laughs> that's, that's their thing. I just, I pay respect to AJ by my gear kind of yeah. very similar to his. Um, and again, I do, do some stuff. Yeah, and <laughs> but, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but for the most part, I try to just pay respect as much as I can to the people that kept me so disciplined and focused on getting to that level. No, that that's awesome. And you know, like I said, it's one thing to, you know, like you with the gear, with you know, different aspects of the whole in-ring presentation you know paying paying tribute to those guys there's other people that you know take it a little too far when you know like i said basically being a carbon copy yeah and that is where it's like okay i get it but you know you need to be able to like you don't want to, oh, I forget who it was that said it, but it's like they didn't want to be the next Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair, whatever it might be. They wanted to be the first them. Absolutely. Next up, I have some kind of random questions. Some might be wrestling related. Perfect. Some might not be. You give me the, the best answer that comes to your head <laughs> in your question. I got you. First up, craziest in match moment for you? Uh, getting stuck in a ladder and the ladder being pushed over. Ouch. Yeah. Is that that would? Oh boy. I know. I I've, I've seen some crazy ladder match moments. I mean, obviously, I'm. Not a competitor, but the guy that was the guy that introduced me to my wife made him the best man at my wedding. He was, I love using this aspect. And funny, you brought up a ladder match. This promotion had their version of the money in the bank ladder match. Obviously, copyright reasons, that's not the exact name of it. But they had a ladder bridge between the guardrail and the ring apron. And I see him with a guy on his back, kind of like the, the white noise with Seamus. And I see him look down at the ladder. And I'm like, uh-uh. Do not tell me. <laughs> he looks down again, leaps, ladder folds into a V, and they disappear on the other side of the ring. Yeah, it gets crazy in those ring, in those matches. No, oh, yeah, the they say, you know, wrestling, it's not a ballet. It's like people talk about, you know, yeah, predetermined, but the damage that you guys take in that ring, pretty damn hard to fake that stuff because, I mean, I'm sure you can verify this because, and I've actually helped set up a few rings. It's, not a damn trampoline in there. Yeah, <laughs> some some because some people think that. No, people, it's that, made of wood. Yeah, it's literally steel beams, then the wood, 
and then you might get lucky to have like a little thin ass bit of padding. Yeah, that's just for the sound effects. <laughs> so yeah, like I hell, I think this might actually, as of recording to this, might be tonight if I'm remembering right. But there's a promotion that a good friend of mine runs that they are having only the second ever version of this match. They called it the they call it the bare bones match. And literally they take off the canvas, they take off a little bit of padding, and we'll go at it. Sounds like a party. <laughs> the the first time they had that match, I was there and oh God, it was brutal. Like, brutal in a good way, because I, I like that intense stuff. And it th- th- was very much that. Next up, you know, independent wrestlers, professional wrestlers in general, you guys travel up and down the roads a lot of time by car. You know, everybody has stuff that they like to have with them. What would you say must have road trip supplies outside of, you know, the obvious of like your, your gear and stuff? Mm. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm really on the go a lot. Um, I mean, I always have to have, I always just, so I keep like a travel kit in my car at all time, ready to go. So I always have like a, like the essentials, um, vitamin water. That's like an essential, I guess. <laughs> have to have vitamin waters. Uh, okay. And my only cheat that I, use, that I eat or I am eating now is slim gyms so I, I have a lot of slim gyms to be honest okay okay really about it. i mean i don't like i just as much as i'm on the road i mean there's stores all over so i don't tend to hold on to things no and hey when when you're on the road as you and a lot of wrestlers out there are yeah you might not necessarily need to keep you know so much stuff as far as snacks and stuff actually in the car, but you know, slim gyms, vitamin water, you know, what would you say some other, you have any other snacks? Because I know you said the one that the slim gyms were the one cheat. Is Mm -hmm. there any other, like maybe healthier snacks or what snacks in general that you like to have with you when you're, you're out, you're traveling along, and you just need a little snack while you're driving down the road. Um, so he's putting me on the spot here, ain't you? <laughs> it happens. Um, I don't know. I really like like the Man, I really don't be eating much. I try to eat meals now. As a kid, you know, like my main problem was snacking too much. That's why I was you know, so little as a child. So I try to eat meals. Um, I guess if I, like my go-to like food, I guess, because I do try to eat meals. I don't like, it's oh. bad to snack kids. But um, my go-to food usually is Popeye's when okay. I'm not eating like I should be. When I'm not at home for myself or meal prepping, it's Popeye's. No, nothing wrong with that. I mean, when, you know, out on the road, sometimes eating the way you probably should be isn't the most readily available thing. Yeah. So, yeah, shout out Popeye's for keeping me unhealthy. Hey, you know, I, it's been a little bit since I've had some Popeye's. I mean, they're, there are some stuff they make that I do I do enjoy. They they don't sponsor me, but hey, if they want to, eh. <laughs> there's there's one restaurant that I travel like out of the way sometime to go to, and it's called the Sunrisers. It's in Paris, Texas. 
it's where I, I'm from. But yeah, I'll travel maybe two hours out out the way to eat there sometimes for sure. Hey, when when you got a place like that that you enjoy, a little bit of travel time can be worth it. Absolutely. Another another thing that kind of goes along with you know traveling down the roads, music. What would you say? Some songs, some artists that might be on a, a road trip playlist. Hmm. My favorite artist is Kevin Gates. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I really don't. I listen a lot to like just general rap, but I try not to. I listen to a little country sometimes, you know, just a little bit. Yeah. Mm. I, I have a lot of rock music, but I, I genuinely like. There's a little secret that I don't really be telling people. Most of my rock music is just like old WWE <laughs> review songs. Hey, that I, hey, I work some out of those, too. some of those back in that day, back in that day, were they had some bangers that during <laughs> back then. So, most of my music is definitely like Kevin Gates, uh, Mo3, R.O.P., um, Matt K. Is a lot of I listen to a lot of Texas rap. If that makes sense, like Mike Down, um, Matt K, Mo Three, you know, just a lot. I listen to a lot of Texas rap. Hey, n- nothing wrong with that. Support the the guys that are local to you. You know, not nothing wrong with that. You know, everybody gets their start somewhere, and you know, it's always good to look back on you know those that you have supported that you know end up blowing up you know you never know you might you never know when you're gonna have that one that one hit that just absolutely blows up absolutely and i mean that could go for wrestling too i mean you never know all of a sudden heck going back to stone cold steve austin he had that whole you know, when he first got to WWE, he had the whole ringmaster thing, and that was kind of not the greatest, even he <laughs> admits it. And then kind of stumbled into things with Stone Cold, and, you know, they people didn't know that the whole Austin 316 thing was going to catch on the way it did, and then, boom, now he's like, like we said, Mount Rushmore – some of the best wrestling characters out there. Absolutely. Next up, I consider myself somewhat of a movie buff. I'm big into movies, haven't really gone to the theater as much lately, but what would you say favorite movie? Favorite movie? Mm. Movie. Just give me a second. Just give me one second. It's a tough. Definitely, it can it can be tough. Like I know for for me, and you know, I actually just found this out that somebody from this movie is actually going to be here in my area in a couple months. But for me growing up, it was always pro wrestling and Ninja Turtles. Those are my two things. And oh, we can pick a, like a series or just movies. Strictly. You can p- you can pick a series. Series would be fine. I'm definitely an anime nerd. Okay, that's all you had to say right there. I'm definitely an anime guy. I was Dragon Ball has definitely been my thing since child. My dog's name is Vegeta. Okay. Name. So. Okay. No, nothing yeah. wrong with that. I know a lot of people that are in the in the yeah, anime. Yeah, in there. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> it and that's fine. Like I know, like I said, pro wrestling and Ninja Turtles was my thing. And going back, you know, two classic movies 
the first two original Ninja Turtle movies. If you ask me, the second one, one of the few sequels that surpasses the original. But I mentioned that a guy from those movies was actually going to be in my area. The guy that was actually behind Splinter in those movies is actually going to be at the O Comic Con here at the end of July. I actually went out and bought a Splinter Funko Pop just for the specific purpose of having him sign it. <laughs> That'd be dope. It was, man, like I said, Pro Wrestling Ninja Turtles. Secret of the Use, the second Ninja Turtle movie, hands down for me, one of my favorite movies ever. I like the yeah. I like the live action ones. Those are dope. But that's just oh, yeah. I'm, I'm young. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I still it might be dating me a little bit. But I still remember when those first two were actually in the theaters and like me just clamoring to have my parents take me to them. I actually have a 30th anniversary super shredder down in down in my basement right now that I can't wait to get all displayed and stuff. That's dope. Yeah, I I got nothing on on anime. I haven't been as big into it as I know a lot of people I, I know are. I just I haven't personally found too many that I've gotten into. But hey, everybody's got their own thing, their own stuff that they enjoy. I, definitely I know take a lot, I take a lot of the character work from animes. And you know what? Lots of people drawn inspiration from lots of different places i know i had a guest on a while back that you know one of the first pictures i saw of him on social media literally had him with some wolverine claws and we we got to talking about you know marvel and x-men during the podcast so it was kind of entertaining um Last but not least, what would you say best advice you have for anybody wanting to get into wrestling? Take your time. Take your time. I mean, I know there's always there's always a wink, like a limit to what the body can do. But for me, I jumped in the game and just rushed so many things and tried to be someone I'm I wasn't at first. Just take your time. Enjoy 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 the training. Enjoy the enjoy the first match because you ain't gonna get another one. <laughs> and you don't know when your last one's gonna be. So enjoy every moment and just take your time and to learn both inside the ring and outside the ring. Cause there's more outside the ring to learn than there is inside the ring. Oh yeah, there's yeah, all sorts all in the world, but if you're a little jackass, you're not going to get anywhere. <laughs> you know, that is true. You, you can have, like you said, have all the talent, but then if you're just going to be a jackass to people, you're you're not going to have those promoters wanting to kind of make you the the face of the promotion. Is when you you're getting the, when you're getting you the title. Win. When you're getting a title Sorry. put on you, that is basically what they're doing. That you're one of the faces of that promotion, and you know you don't want somebody that's just going to be treating people like a jackass. Absolutely, just just be respectful and pay your dues. Do as much as you can for the business, because business is gonna. If you do what you like, if you do all you can for the business, the business will pay you back. Oh yeah, no. It's definitely one of those things that uh, you you get what you put into it. If you're gonna put your all into it, you'll. I mean, sometimes it takes a little time, but that's where you say you know take your time, you know. But you put your your all into it, it'll come back to you. Well. Before we go, I want to 
give you the time. Where can people find you social media wise? So if they don't already have their eyes on the technician, they can go ahead and get them there. Absolutely. So on all social medias, you can find me as either I am Devion, you know, I am Devion or on, um, we on Facebook as technician Devion. Like I said, YouTube, I am Devion. You can also catch me on the MPX Twitch stream. Catch me on, like I said, Empire Pros TV deal they got going on. I don't know exactly what that is. Um, Wrestling for a Cause, you can catch me on IWTV at Wrestling for a Cause. I'm there often with my boy Cappuccino Jones. Um, Man, other than that, man, just keep looking at the schedule. Schedule's always changing, always new states getting added. Again, I'm going all over the country and hopefully all over the world very soon. So just stay tuned. Just keep checking social media sites, and uh, hopefully we'll meet a bunch of you guys soon. Oh, definitely. We'll have information for all that in the description of both you know youtube and podcast or platforms but uh one thank you for taking the time to talk to me tonight and you know i appreciate it man. It was, the, hmm? i appreciate it man it was fun oh i definitely had a blast and you know best of luck out there with the upcoming shows and hoping for big things from the technician yes sir yes sir